There you go. Welcome back, everybody, to Tales from Felfair Manor. Last we left off, Father David was in a precarious situation, talking with someone he could not see, being asked if he was their friend, while everybody else was out having a good time. Yes, they left the priest alone in the haunted mansion. We, we left him alone so he, he can have a romantic date with, with, um, with what's his face? Um, uh, What's his face? Miguel! Damn, Miguel. Sorry. It's not just Raymond for sorry. Him. Oh my god. I'm not. I, I'm not at 100% today. <laughs> Unfortunately, Miguel um, leaves the mansion every day at around 10 before dark. Weird. Indeed. It's almost like he doesn't want to stay at the haunted mansion when the no one's darkness falls. Again, weird. Can't imagine why. <laughs> so, uh, anyway. so yeah. Anyway, all of you, uh, except Father David, return a few hours later. A few hours later, having had a good time out, uh, out at the pub with some delightful food. And some even more delightful drinks. And the most delightful uh, getting to pet Basker. Yes, the flappiest of boys. The flappiest of boys. Yeah, so petting him the entire night. <laughs> and you finally return to the mansion, which seems almost ominously dark to you as you approach in your cars. And then again, you're about... You're about used to that by now. Although oh. it is very strange that Father David would not turn on any lights. Big oh, question. You all. Yes? How drunk are we? Yes. We should, we, sh we should make that clear before we do anything else. You're tipsy. You're not, you're not off your shits. Okay. You've had uh, a pleasant amount of drinks to make you jolly. But nothing beyond that. None of you are shit. I've also probably had a bit of time to sober up a bit or a little. Exactly. Oh, also, uh, to clarify, we are two men short today, but we've been waiting for yonks for them, so we're tired yeah. of waiting. Yeah. This is what happens. This is what happens when you don't when you don't get here in time. We only, it starts without you. We only need Father David and the two people who care about him most. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, but Miguel none of us are playing Joe. Miguel. <laughs> I would be honored, but no. All right. Father David, um. you hear as the door opens below. And voices filter in. Happy voices. Someone turns on the light. He had just sent the picture of the scribbled message to the group and had crouched down, grabbing the, uh, the crayon to write. Looking down at the, uh, sketch, look, looking down at the little color book. Uh, does the writing line up with the <clears throat> drawing on the previous writing? The drawing on the previous writing? Does it line look... Up? Like it was by the same person. Oh yes, absolutely. Okay. That is almost a one-to-one. -one. He, um... He's gonna write down into the book! Mm -hmm. Of, would you like to be friends? He writes down these words into the little, uh, the little coloring book. And it's almost as though he can feel someone moving ever so slightly next to him. And that's when he hears people returning downstairs. <coughs> he looks towards where he hears the sounds and puts the crayon down. Uh, Stan giving the well-loved doll the tiny pet before he... Uh, Kind of walks towards where he hears the many motherfuckers. 
Would you all even tipsy? Many motherfuckers. Yeah, we are. I don't know when. Probably when we see uh, father, we'll you know wave at him. I'm already at the top of the stairs. I'm not gonna wave to him. That's weird. <laughs> Jonah will. <laughs> yeah, Jonah is weird. Exactly. Ah, father David. Uh, where's Miguel? What are you doing here in the dark? Oof. Well, Miguel generally tends to leave at about ten every day. Got to make it home to the... Well, he stays at the inn, right? Has to make it there before dark. Yeah, I have been wondering why he doesn't stay here. Oh, heavens, Jonah. I couldn't imagine why. Yep, it's a mystery, says Patty Green. You could have walked him home or something. Oh, well. He made soup. Did anything happen Missed. other than the soup? <clears throat> I, uh, he looks down at his outfit. He takes a little tiny feather from his shoulder and uh, pockets it. <laughs> Accidentally mm. made a pillow explode. What? Paddy's grin possibly cannot get wider. Explode? It explo it exploded. Uh, well, I was holding it, and uh, well, st something absolutely terrible happened to poor, Rip. poor Rosie, and in in the, I I couldn't. I, I ended up squeezing the pillow too tight, and it just poof. Raymond does. Raymond, he makes a hand motion. Raymond does a very, very knowing nod. It just happens to the best of us, Father. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Wait, Rosie? Rosalina. She's a. She's one of the characters in the telenovela. Oh, okay, okay. Oh my God, he watches telenovelas. Of course he does. Well, it's a very compelling story. I'd explain it all, but I don't think we have the time tonight. I will and find. I wouldn't want to keep you up all night. I will. I will send you an an abridged YouTube video. It's only ten hours long. <laughs> it covers the first two seasons. Of fifty. <laughs> it's mostly spoiler free. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> yeah. hmm. Well. Uh, happen, Father? Well, I sent you all a picture. So? Yeah, it frowns, looks at her phone. Raymond They've does the same. They've been having such a good time that they'd all just completely neglected their phones. Raymond scrolls through like 50 pictures of the dog. <laughs> and more dog, more dog. So you're mm. looking, Father David's going to creep that towards the book and peek at it. Literally creep? Or are you walking normally? He's got, we're just gonna shuffle a little bit and then uh, walk back. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Look at this creepy priest. He's up to something. Patty That's not funny, finds... <laughs> David. Patty yeah, finds I, the, uh, I trust him with my life. Patty finds the picture that Father David sent to the group chat. Her eyes all widen and she immediately strides over. To the table, to the coloring book, and to the well locked door. What does the book say? Was there any reply? Uh, remind me again what it was you wrote in it. Would you like to be friends? Hmm. There is indeed a reply. Underneath it, in the same childish writing, 
written in crayon is I like friends. All right. That's not unsettling at all. Now that David's going to reach for the crayon. <laughs> uh, which is what I am going to be saying in person or in character if we uh, see or if Jonah is shown that. Oh yeah, I, I do believe that if Father David is showing everybody this. Yeah? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. He takes takes the crayon and he's gonna kneel down and he's gonna write in it. I like friends too. And then he's gonna put a little smiley face. Oh my god. Oh yeah, the smiley face makes that much less threatening. Oh yeah. I think you're the only person I know who would literally put a smiley face. When talking to a ghost. Well, it's just a wee lamb, isn't it? I don't know, Father David, is it? Well, I, I think it's uh, the wee one that was handling the door. I think. Did the ghost even know what a smiley face is? Uh, well, there's one right there, and he points at the kind of eerie smiley face next to the are you my friend fair enough yeah yeah it looks like uh or looks like emojis have been in use for quite a while then no it's not emojis lad but, mm. yeah it is mm. yeah it is you know what you you had a good point um he starts to write down, who are you? What is your name? And he puts the crayon down and he moves back from the table. Yeah, of course. Everybody's staring at the book and the table and nothing happens. Uh, Riveting. The wee thing's a bit shy. We might have to uh, move somewhere else for a short period of time. Oh. Fair enough. Miss Patty Green. And then walks over to the wrist table and puts her phone down, starts recording, and walks away. Hmm. Might as well get freshened up a bit after night in the pub. I might as well get me cozies on. I'm going to the public bathroom. My room, going to go get... my room doesn't have one. Ah. I'm going to get my pajamas on. Hmm? I'm going to be waiting around. Yeah, I think I'll do that too. If anywhere that I need to go, so I'll just hang out with Patty. So, how about them dogs. Oh my god. Dogs. I forgot about them. Love them. As everybody steps out and do each their mm, respective thing, I'd like for Jonah to roll a listening check. Alright. Let me check exactly what my listen is. Or Oh yeah, I can actually just roll it from here. Yep. Oh, it appears like you succeed. Yep. Very nice, very nice. Jonah, you hear, despite you and Patty and talking to each other, you will hear the distinct sound of someone writing. It's timid er, and a little oh, bit slow. Writing, sorry. Yeah, writing. It's timid and a little bit slow. But it's definitely there and it's coming from the old coloring book. I... Uh. I'll mention to Patty, hey, uh, do you hear that? I think our ghost is writing us. And Patty nods. I've been hearing it. 
we'll check it, we'll check out the footage once it's done. And a few moments later, there's the sound of the crayon hitting the table again. And Teddy immediately leaves. Quibb then checks out what the book says. Uh, Jonah will be a bit more interested in, uh, what the phone video shows. Yes, he is. <clears throat> uh, once again, what was it uh, Father David wrote? Um, uh, crayon? Oh, sorry. In, in crayon, he wrote down, uh, I like friends too, with a little smiley face, and then, who are you? What's your name? Right. In crayon... There's only one shaky new word. It's a name. And it says Esther. Teddy calls up. Father David? Father David's pulling his PJs on. <laughs> I guess we gotta wait for the man. Oh. And Teddy walks over to the phone, along with Jonah, and check out the footage. Yep. And you do, in that footage, indeed see the crayon moving on its own. And slowly and de uh, deliberately writing out the name Esther. <sighs> in the coloring book. And we all see that, that uh, recording. Oh, yes. It's a little bit dark, but... Uh... I told you it was ghosts. How do you explain this? It's fucking ghosts. Oh, fishing boy comes to mind. Raymond will go to the table and, like, wave his whole arm on top of the, the, the crayon. See if he can catch any wires. Oh, just pick up the crayon. Doesn't catch a single thing. Yeah, he will then pick up the crayon. And well, honestly, I haven't thought that far ahead. Um... Patty will look at him <laughs> with just the most immense deadpan. Raymond, What's do you enough? know how fishing wire uh, hoaxes work? No, we had a man for that. <laughs> yeah, it would certainly take a lot more than that. <sighs> Look, Raymond is a maybe more than a bit tipsy. Just admit that it's ghosts already. I will not admit to anything. But I will it's okay but to I be will, wrong. I will concede. If I don't admit anything, I can't be wrong now, can I? <laughs> I will concede the point. That there are things going on here that I can't rationally explain. That doesn't mean it's ghosts. He puts the crayon down and then looks at the um, the, uh, the name Esther. And remind me real quick. Where did we see Esther before? Well, uh, give me an idea roll. I <laughs> kind of wanted to look in the, the notes first. Let's see. We can do that too. Maybe that's where we have the notes, right? Mm -hmm. Ah, right. It was the the coloring book. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, the the name checks out the same as in the coloring book, and it certainly looks like it was written by a child. Curious. Okay, I've hidden about that. Is Esther written normally, or does it have, a, have an adorable backward E and stuff? It has an adorable uh, uh, backwards S. Ah, wonderful. Eh. Everyone knows it's the S that's backwards. Defin definitely. Exactly. Def S's are hard. Exactly. Definitely a child's writing. <laughs> Father David's gonna come down the stairs shortly after. In your pajamas? Yeah. What do, you, is, uh, what, what do your hmm? pajamas look like, Father David? He's got 
Do they have little sheep on the... Yes, there is a little sheep pattern on his uh, gumi pajama pants. And he's got an old faded... Um, I'll let you guys pick either Christian camp or faded Beatles shirt. Oh, faded Christian Beatles. camp. No, faded Beatles. Fine, I'll be outvoted. <laughs> <laughs> the faded Beatles shirt. I half expected like a Veggie Tail shirt. Oh, my oh my God. God. <laughs> okay, no, no, no. It's a Veggie Tail shirt. No. Faded no. Veggie Tail shirt. That's fair. Perfect. Fine. <laughs> little Veggie Tail shirt. The best of both worlds. Okay. And he moves out. It is. Well, he's also wearing like socks, but I didn't. Well, Not exactly necessary detail. Well, how I guess you're also wearing a uh, night or er, uh, one of those hat or er, you a know what I mean. Cap. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I wasn't sure no. if that was the name for them. Oh, it that is. goes on when you're in the bed. <laughs> oh, of course. It, okay, if you're wearing a night a nightcap, I will be so sad for you. You <laughs> why? <laughs> No, also, I hope you wear slippers, because this is not carpet, this is all light. Yeah, he's wearing socks. Nah. Still cold. That's not good for you, that's not healthy. Oh, Father David, I see you made a friend of sorts? Someone Was there a reply? Someone named Esther. And he, uh, Raymond, uh -huh. Raymond shows him the, the little book thing. Just holds it up in front of him. He looks at the book, and he smiles at the name. Oh, yes. That's a very good idea. And it's also the same name that was in the coloring book that we found. That must be our girl, then. Admittedly, it's not he, uh, that common a name anymore. He uh, holds out his hands for the book. Raymond will just give him the book. And the crayon. He takes the crayon and he'll sit. He'll sit down on his knees uh, at the table, and he'll write down, "I'm David. I would love to be your friend." Did we establish how old Esther was? No. Nope. Did we have theories or nothing? Probably very young. Yes, I'm asking because I. I mean, I'm gonna guess like six or seven. Okay. That's fair. Well, let's sit down in the book and he sets the crayon down, gives the doll another affectionate little pat. Really, Patty, I can't thank you enough for your sewing skills. I say, the little guy obviously needed, needed a new outfit. Indeed. He looks Come quite on. strapping in it. Let's give, uh, let's give Esther some room to respond. Sounds like a good plan. <laughs> Everyone retreat from the book. Yeah, Everybody's like we're going to be doing this. Hey, uh... Rev! Scatter. Yeah. You know, I might not... have to... You're not scattering, you're just following Father David around. You know, I might have to ask a bit of your help on sewing again if I manage to get my hands on some stuffing for one of the couch pillows. Seeing as the dreadful state I left the other one in. Don't worry, I've got your little, um, accident covered. Oh, um... Don't worry. When a man's at his weakest, don't need to make fun of him. It happens to it happens to all men at some point in life. Oh, is this one of your jokes? <laughs> he looks at you Teddy like a is. gives you like the kind of look that a teacher would <laughs> if they caught you in the middle of like a. Pretty pun. Exactly. It doesn't happen normally. 
It just, I got very worked up. She didn't deserve that from her fiance or her sister. <laughs> you really got into that telenovela, didn't you? Yes. Yes, I did. Very compelling. you stand discussing Father David's private life and escapades, you all hear uh, some more scribbling. It isn't too long before the Queen pops to give her to the table again. Esther having apparently finished her message. Uh, remind me again what, yeah, what is it this Father time? David wrote. Father David wrote, I would love to be friends. Uh, well, my name is David, I would love to be friends. Okay. This time, is... Go ahead. Hmm? Go ahead. Who's gonna... When he hears the uh, crayon hit on the table, he uh, looks at the others. Kind of like seeing if they also heard it. Locks eyes with Patty and Esther Celeste, and uh, Patty nods at him. They both heard it. Looks to Raymond and Jonah. Hmm. Oh. I got enough. Shall we go? Shall we go check what the wheel lamb wrote? Uh, for sure. Yeah, of course. Yep. Let's go. Looking over there. They look at the page. This time, the page says. Uh, hang on, I say I gotta think for a hot, uh, for a hot moment here. It's a little bit late. A very complicated sentence for uh, for a pit, for a child, I know. This Take time. Your time. Page says, uh, the page says, your friends are weird. Oh, well, that could mean anything or anyone. I'm gonna write down what Father David puts in the book now so you don't. So it's like kept track of. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mm. Oh, she's calling you lots a bit weird. Just tell her she's weird. Don't antagonize the ghost or the child. Come on. I have a history of doing that, though. I already antagonized one ghost. What's the second one? I don't know, we should be my you be nice to the little kid ghosts because they are the ones that will kill you. They are the <laughs> creepiest shit. <laughs> to that point. Like the middle age or the elderly ghosts? Oh yeah, yeah, what are they gonna do? Well, they might kill you. Take their walking sticks at you and be disgruntled at how you decorated the yeah. living room. <laughs> yeah, like what else are they going to do? Ominously rattle some chains? <laughs> yeah, it's a bit spooky, but that's fine. Well, what's a kid gonna do? Throw around ghost Legos for me to step on. Oh, you yeah, that's know. way worse. You don't want to know what a kid can do with Legos. You really don't want to know what a dead kid can do with Legos. <laughs> hey, Jonah made it. Father David writes that down. Puts the crayon down. <laughs> and then just kind of like makes this motion with his hands, like, all right, everybody, let's kind of get fucking move on. No, not that sassy. This time, Patty decides to uh, walk to the other side of the couch and turn around and lean there because so far, line of sight has been the main thing. She That's, leans uh, and she's like, Celeste wants to do the same. Let's go behind oh, this yeah. corner. Esther 
wrote as soon as I turned my back while you were gone. Oh. And he'll, he'll walk a little away from the table and he'll turn around. Raymond will... <laughs> Raymond will uh, pull out his phone and hold it out, out from the corner without looking himself. Yeah. Uh, Jonah will also be staring off in, or looking off into this direction. Yeah. Upside down. Yeah, he's yeah. just doing a headstand. You get a you get a hiccup. A few moments later, there is a response once more. In the same shaky hand, Esther has written. I like. I like my darling's new outfit. He, he smiles and kind of touches his cheek. He looks towards Patty. Oh, Patty. She likes the outfit that you gave to her darling. Patty will uh, smile. Well, what can I say? No, really, what can I say? I don't usually play petty games. You're welcome? Yeah. Also, You're what welcome. Did, what did my- what did Raymond's phone record? Raymond's phone did indeed record as Father David turned around, the crayon being picked up, and uh, the book being written in. One of the legs of the doll also looked almost as if someone was leaning on the table and accidentally nudged it with an elbow. That's consistent behavior. <laughs> yeah, and I'm telling ya, it's a ghost. Or, well, he's a ghost. I'm not re I'm not just ready to support that hypothesis. Okay, so as an alternative, do you think it's going to be aliens? Clear. Aliens. Those are your only two options here at the moment. Ghosts or aliens. That is, your <laughs> that is all you got. Two options. Ghosts or aliens. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, those are the two explanations for anything. Ghosts Ray or aliens. Raven will look to John. What about gnomes or fairies? I would... Uh, everyone knows that gnomes aren't real. Yeah. 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 He writes down again, and then he turns uh, it around. It could also be a or it could also be a really, really elaborate practical joke. Um, like you know, if we're on, or do you know if there's like cameras or something, like we're on TV or something? I'm pretty sure there are only. Or going to be on TV. I'm pretty sure there are only all cameras around. <laughs> Or maybe one of us is mm. working for a TV show. Who knows? Ooh, I bet it's Patty. Oh, it's totally Patty. Oh, absolutely. Patty, you're a star. time Father David looks into the book he reads and sees this message Found a bit he tilt his head and then immediately write down This time, as Father David turns around and leaves the coloring book alone, there is not the sound of scribbling or careful writing. There is the sound of 
the leaves being turned into books rather quickly too once he turns back it has stopped on the page where Esther drew herself holding hands with the tall man <laughs> Uh, Father David gets a little more, more noticeably pale when he sees that. And uh, the, the four of the others just hear a little... I won't do that. He kneels down and he looks at the page and touches at the uh, drawing very lightly before he carefully flips back to the page with their conversation. And writes down. Uh, ba -ba -ba. What is your name? Oh, okay, nice. They nice. Well, they never heard. Oh, me. They, they never heard me. Incredibly nice, super nice. Oh, he's Mr. Tall. Mr. Tall. I think it's Mr. Who Mr. is Mr. Tall, and he laughs a lot. That's Mr. Tall has given. Me and my friends write a book. This far. Mm -hmm. Okay, Father David, how about you take that book and go back into the basement to Mr. Tall? <laughs> Say hello from all of us. Ooh, they gotta find the right, like, things for the little set, like, concerned face. He's gonna, like, draw down. <laughs> <laughs> you can always just describe that he's drawing a concerned face. He he does draw the little, uh, concerned face after what he, uh, writes. With, like, the upturned eyebrows, like, oh, no. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, dear. <laughs> oh, boy. I have good that gnome will point you happy next. Maybe he was angry because, because we didn't call him Mr. Tall. Like, we weren't polite enough. Yeah, everyone knows that English ghosts want you to be polite. Yeah, obviously. As Father David puts the uh, the book down again, Lady Feister to write in. Her words come more quickly now. She seems to be getting more and more confident and more comfortable writing to you. He likes to play parts sometimes. Yeah, I guess you'd call that a prince. We play. A ask about the, the nature of said prank. Well, I'm, I'm writing down what pr pranks does he play. So that might give us a little bit of insight. Fair enough. Well, you know, the one prank where he just takes your arms and rips them off your upper body. <laughs> the hilarious prank. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. I pull that one on my friends all the time.
have some sticks to it. I think we had the first and the last. I'm not sure about the tag. Did we touch any of them? I don't think so. Oh, no, not yet. We ran away. I mean, of course we ran away. They wanted to touch us. Ah. Uh, Father oh, Davidson. Oh, yes, yeah, so we were playing tag. He uh, turns around and he looks away. Uh, he doesn't write in the book this time, but he does ask, Doors, what happens when you lose a game with Mr. Paul? How does the laughing make you feel, Lester? Oh, poor dear. Father David touches at the book lightly. Okay. Okay. Th things are happening. Oh. Uh, is there any particular reason you'd like me to find Mr. Toll? Bing bong. Fuck your life. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> it finally registered in my brain what Mitch said. Oh. Huh? Fuck your life! Bing bong! <laughs> yeah. Well, he was in the basement last time I saw him, and he was playing tag with us, but he didn't let us know we were playing tag. So it gave all of us a right scare, which I don't think any of us appreciated. <coughs> yeah, if you could at least ask us to play first. God, that would have been, that would have been so much worse. Just some disembodied yes. voice in the basement. Do you want to play a game? <laughs> I I would play I would play tag with ghosts. What happened in the basement, love? I see. Mr. Tor used to play a lot down there. I tell you what. Right now, I don't think I can be looking for Mr. Tor as it's about bedtime for me. But would you like me to read your story? Where would you like me to read the story here? Of course. Do you know where the storybook is? This time before uh, Father David actually finished talking, he sees the great one writing in the book. Is it scary in there?
Oh, yeah. Well, we'll sit and we'll read the story of Snow White on the couch. Would you, would you kindly tell me where the storybook is, dear? Did we come across a, a fairy tale? Yeah, book? didn't we? F yeah, we found some book, but I don't know if it was uh, the book uh, the ghost is talking about. You can roll a wisdom check if you'd like. Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah, I can roll wisdom. Or not. Oh, you need it. I 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 need it. it. It is, uh, my listen is 68, but, damn it. <laughs> no, I mean, uh, Raymond will look to Father, Father David, you can probably find it as an ebook online. It could be free. Or Not public. very good at looking online for things. It's public domain. Fine. <laughs> Like I said, I'm not very good at looking online for things. Sake, if I can jam my phone, could you could you find it for me? Oh, yes, of course. We could also look for <laughs> the book somewhere, but no, let's let's give, give give me a phone. Give me a phone. Fine. This is a ghost thing. I'm sure the actual physical book really matters here. You sure? Yes. Yeah, that's how this stuff works. Have you not seen horror movies before? As all oh, of you said, God, uncultured. Let as all of as all of you stand and discuss this event, suddenly you hear something from the library across the hall. Huh? Tap. A room. Something falls to the floor. You open the door and you look inside. Oh. Is it a book? You open the door and as you do, you notice something scraping along the floor at the edge of the door. It is indeed a book. A storybook. Ooh. One of Grimm's old fairy tales. You will look See, I book. told you we need to find the actual book. Or, Ooh. I guess we don't need to find it if... Uh, it comes to us. Well, thank you so very much, Hester. I appreciate the help. Let's go sit down on the couch. Oh. And thank you too, Jonah. You were a good help. <laughs> Only getting more, <laughs> as usual. Yeah, and Jonah did basically nothing, but... <laughs> oh no, you mentioned that uh, the physical book would matter in this. You got lucky you with this too, Mr. Shafter. I've just seen horror movies before. Why would you bring up uh, horror movies when we live in a haunted mansion? It's so that we right. know what it's to do and what not to do. All right, Obviously. Hey. <clears throat> hey, a lot of you. How about you all go get into your pajamas? I'm going to be reading Astra's story. Patty Green and Dr. Silas the Bong uh, both agree. Patty grabbing her phone, which was still recording on the table, so that she may go over this recording later on. Inside. <coughs> 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 As you all leave upstairs, you hear Father David's voice starting on Once Upon a Time. And as Father David starts on that, you can almost swear that he feels a tiny weight shifting right inside of him. Well, he's going to grab the well-loved doll and set it on the couch too, by the way. <clears throat> Got to mention that. Uh, have the doll read the on book. the couch. Have the doll read the book with you. 
oh, the doll is for cuddling while you, well, while you read to the kiddo. Oh, fair enough. They gotta have something to hug after all. Oh, yeah. oh yes, Snow White is very scary. Well, it is if it's the original Grimm version. Well, I, I sure hope it is. Which appears to be the version the child wants. Yeah. Yep. We shall find you the original German version. <laughs> the child well, will never Esther sleep is, again. Esther is a German name. Well, yes and no. Because At least it's also used in Germany. Anyway, well, that's that's nitpickery. That's nitpick. Question. Let's let's make nitpick later. Yeah. Can I can I slide the the green lens shades out of my fucking pocket? <sighs> Put them on and look at the couch beside myself. Go right ahead. Okay. Don't mind me, Esther. Let me just put on my green reading glasses. I'll put on the green read. He does so. Very and casually. As, and as he does so, he does see a very faint green shimmer on the couch next to him. Not as strong as the residue left on the different objects that were so obviously touched by ghosts, although the doll is still practically bioluminescent. He almost feels as though he can just about make out the general shape of the little girl. Very softly. And the glasses, kind of, he takes the glasses off, putting them back in his pocket as he continues to read. He's just a little girl. She answered many questions. And he's very proud of her, and her handwriting is very nice. And now she is getting a bedtime story. Yeah, because this is a uh, wholesome episode. It is indeed. You didn't think it was gonna be, but it was. He's he's in his fucking Veggie Tales shirt. What do you expect? <laughs> <laughs> Such a wholesome time up in this bitch. Mm -hmm. So, as Father David reads to the little girl next to him that he cannot see but can only just sense his eyes start getting heavy and his voice starts getting it starts getting slow a little bit croaky and before he can remember finishing up the book the story he finds himself drifting off into sleep. Damn it, the child is supposed to fall asleep, not you. <laughs> he's, he's had you got this all backwards. The child doesn't sleep. As <laughs> she wrote. I mean, I gotta be honest, I was wondering how you would carry the child to bed after she fell asleep. If she doesn't want to go in her old room, she can only float there. So he just sleeps on the couch? That it? That can't be good. Probably. He's gonna be sore, but you know, it's worth it. He'll be fine. Like it's a ghost child. Can they be sore? That'd be... Man, that would be a bad deal. No, Father David's gonna be sore. The kid's not. No, yeah. I think... Oh. Raymond will... Raymond having... Raymond having changed in his um, nightgown... Uh, I don't even know what it would look like. Ebenezer Scrooge style nightgown no, with no, a it nightgap would be, it, atop no, and the shambling candelabra. It <laughs> candelabra. <laughs> yeah. Raymond having you are absolutely heavy. the one to do that. Raymond having just returned from a time travel adventure into the 1850s comes out of his room. No. No, it would be like, it would be some something Italian made out of silk or some bullshit like that. I, I don't even know. So he comes out wearing a monogrammed uh, nightgown that looks a bit like a very thin uh, bathrobe. 
But if you ask him what the difference between that and a bathrobe is, he would go into a lengthy explanation that doesn't explain a thing. Anyway, we will uh, check up on Father David and presumably see him fast asleep. Oh, yes. Suppose the story was a bit too riveting for him. <laughs> all, Excitable. All tuckered out, little guy. Hmm. Hmm. Do I let him sleep here or do I try carrying him up to his room? <laughs> oh, you can always roll the strength check if you'd like. And I might wake. Oh, here's, here's the thing: I might wake him Jay up. Might even, even if I make it, I might up. wake him up, and I don't want that. <laughs> uh, Raymond will go back to his room, pick up uh, uh, an extra an extra blanket he has and a pillow, and go back and uh, get stuck in a door apparently, and. Uh, <laughs> No. Your door. Go back, carefully slide the the pillow under Father David's head, and then put the blanket over him. Aww. Aww. But there's no way I can carry you up that winding staircase without, like, I don't know, hurting your head or something. Phantom of the Opera style. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, let me get my half mask. Yes. <laughs> It's part of my nightgown. What, you don't have a half mask? It's part of my nightgown, actually. <laughs> <laughs> it, it shields half of my face and moisturizes at the same time. I switch it every night. <laughs> Suicides. Oh, I can so see him do that. That's the worst <laughs> part. Oh, no, it's, it's a half moisturizing mask. If you, you only do half the face every night. It's better for the skin. Oh, my God. <laughs> so, anyway, as Raymond comes back and... Uh, Puts the blanket over Father David. He will note that the well-loved doll has changed position on the couch from being next to him to being tucked between his arms. Oh, well, obviously he did that in his sleep. Because that's the rational explanation. It is. Well, uh, Raymond will take a piece of the blanket and put it around the doll too. Oh, tuck, tuck, tuck. Tuck, 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 yes. And then he will... Hmm. Probably just leave him alone. I don't know, caressing his head seems a bit weird. Just a bit. Yeah, leave Father David. Does Father David speak in his sleep or something? I hope not. Sometimes. Oh dear. Only sometimes, though. Well, I I'm sure he'll be fine. Also, Raymond will put the uh, the fairy tale book on the table, and also <laughs> and also Father David's uh, phone, so he doesn't accidentally sleep on it and breaks it. Because that's a that's terrible. Um, it's just the sheer power of his muscles. Yeah, I mean. If anyone's strong enough to do something like that, it's Father David. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. He's got the power of God and Andy on his side. <laughs> Are you kidding me? That man murders pillows. Exactly. Yeah, With just think of what hand. he would do to a phone. Raymond so, is... Ray yeah, hold. His arms are for holding. Raymond is slightly worried about his Egyptian cotton pillow, though. Oh. Well, he can... Uh, he can buy 30 or 40 more if he wants to. Um... Hello, land in his room. I'll just I'll just leave him alone, and go back to my room. I should also note that both the pillow and the blanket are monogrammed. Very That's elaborate. True. Of course, yeah. elaborately so. Ooh. At least it'll be obvious who uh, who put it there. <clears throat> Esther, low key making sure Father David doesn't run into the. Pissed off ladies who do not like priests upstairs. <laughs> Be careful, you just you're uh, just looking out for for her priest. They they're friends now. He said yes, they're friends now. Exactly, they're friends. Anyway, <coughs> uh, 
Yes, Raymond goes back to his room and everybody starts tucking in for the night. Most of you slightly tipsy and as such very very easily falling asleep. Quite so. The house the house goes quiet. And nobody notices as footsteps echo down the hallway and paintings that were hung askew are collected. Oh, good heavens. Oh, right, we were also doing that. I wasn't. It wasn't my fault. Don't kill me, ghost. The next morning dawns with a surprising amount of warm sunlight for the English countryside and bird song. So you mean there is a sun this day? I know. Oh, can we, since the night is over, can we roll for like a sedentary stuff? Yes. Yes, you can. Right. So I have skills. Ooh. Skills. I delicious, do. delicious skills. And we're trying to roll under it, right? We have a thing, a thing in a note. At the end of each day, roll a d100 for each skill that was success successfully rolled. If you roll above, you may increase the skill by 1d10. Oh, right, right. Bonk. Uh, That's a fail. Listen. Yeah, I'll let you go first. That's a win for a cult. Hey! Roll a d10. Oops. Oh, oh, wow. Okay. Oh. The cult is up to you. You read one. Forty-four, you maybe. Read, you read one Brother Grimm story and just your cult shoots up in the sky. Are you kidding it's, me? No, you it's had from Talking Ghost. ghost incident. <laughs> eh, that's nothing. Uh, right. it's just clearly the story. Well, move you thing, Moose. Okay. Spanish. Spanish gets an increase. Hey. From the telenovela. How, yes! How much though? Perfect. How much? Fuck! <laughs> not that, not that much. Uh, you learned you picked up one or two words. Two more words. An entire <laughs> sentence that they kept repeating. That's fine. You know. <laughs> I'm gonna cry. I'm gonna cry. Oh, Jesus. Oh, hey, that rolled. Hey. Alright. Surely that is an increase. Wait, it's gotta be. Nice. And that'll be sixty-eight. Perfect. Right. And that... which one's that? Can I... Or that I uh, just got buffed? Oh, spot hidden. Ah. I'm now more yeah. perceptive. Uh, can I now? Are you done, Coop? Yep. Okay, so, let's see. Uh, no. That was very much under me. History. No. <laughs> I were you. No. Listen. Damn. Yeah, listen, get an increase. Okay. Sweet. Okay. Ooh. Nice. Ooh. Yo. All right. So let's see if I can get. And one more. Wait. Yep. And Spot Hidden also gets an increase. Hey. Or four. Oh. Okay, okay. You can, Mitch. All right, let's see if Fast Talk does. Shit, no, it does not. No, you do. Don't, no, wait. No, no, he rolled. What? Yeah. He rolled lower. Oh, yeah, yeah. The, 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 uh, <laughs> the, 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 right, the, yeah. You can, uh, you, I know what I'm doing. Yeah, you can use the sheet, you know. You can. If it shows a zero, you got it. Okay. I yeah, a lot easier. Will be for listen. Hell yeah, look at that. Nine, Ooh. nice. Nice. Please. Oops. All right, and also spot hidden as well. Oh well, oh, I got one good. Uh, yeah. I finally got an increase. I think that's the first time. <laughs> Definitely uh, better than nothing. Yeah, this was this was actually worthwhile. Okay. Yeah, it was. <clears throat> so 
we all wake up to the due to the unnatural sensation of sunlight on our faces. Oh yeah. Father David wakes up first because well, he's been sleeping on the couch and his neck is very stiff. Ah, I'm holding in the joke so hard. <laughs> <laughs> it's not the only thing um, that's stiff. <laughs> after an evening with uh with Miguel, it's not the only thing that's stiff. Yeah, fuck it. <laughs> Terrible. He would never. He would never. He would. He's never. polite. He's very polite. Father David shakes up. It's like. Cracking noises. Oh yeah, he sits up and sounds like a cement mixer. <laughs> Stretches his eyes, wipes his eye as he looks down and sees the small doll in his lap. And smiles at it and holds it Aww. before uh, kind of getting up and looking at the pillow and blanket that were draped over him. It. Doesn't take very long to figure out who goes there. I mean, who else has Egyptian cotton blankets in this place? With his own Father name David on will it. only know these are. Yeah, yeah. It has his name on it. That's easy. Yep. Raymond just expects. I don't know Egyptian cotton by feel alone. Raymond just expects people to know the difference. Because why wouldn't you not? Right. That's the he Raymond takes, difference. He, he takes the blanket and he folds it. And he takes the pillow, and he, you know, fluffs it out, puts that on top of the folded blanket, and he starts to uh, carry that. And the well of doll, well of doll, on the shoulder. Please don't make the pillow explode. <laughs> explode that pillow. He takes it. <clears throat> and he goes... And he's gonna peek into Raymond Chapter's room after giving like the tiniest little knock, worried about waking him up at an atrocious hour. Oh, Raymond is awake and already in his morning gown, doing what appears to be yoga. You hear just uh, the lightest little polite rap on your door. One moment. Yeah. And one, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two. <laughs> he puts a he, uh, he closes up his morning gown, so, you know, not everything is on in plain view. Put on two. Then opens the door. Yes? Good morning. Good morning, uh, Mr. Shafter. <coughs> Thank you. For what? For the pillow and, and the blanket. I appreciate it. Oh, oh, don't mention it. Didn't mean to fall asleep on the couch, but uh, bedtime stories are bedtime stories, be they from the old Germanic version or not. Oh, yes, you should try the original German. Much more riveting. He uh, holds out the. Much more bloody, too. Eh. Raymond um, hesitates a bit before taking the pillow and the blanket, but then, but then does puts them behind him uh, on a little drawer thing, and then uh, cleans his hands with a handkerchief. Oh, I am sorry. Would you like me to wash those for you? Oh no, no, don't worry. I will put them in the wash later. Ah, uh, just uh, right. Gotta be careful with germs. Germs are everywhere. Uh, of course. Would you like me to make you some tea? Oh, just some some coffee would be lovely. All right then. Um, uh, sh uh, two sugar, one spot of cream, and the faintest wisp of cinnamon. Wisp. The faintest wisp of cinnamon on it. Wisp of cinnamon. Ah. <laughs> he listens to this, and like part of his brain is dissociating. He's like, ah. Uh, he nods. Like, all right. I'll see you downstairs in a in a in a moment. I look forward to it. 
And goes and he gets his phone. He very quickly writes down into the phone what the fuck Craven just said. Oh my Can't god. Can't forget. <laughs> no, he's gotta write it down so he doesn't forget how he wants his coffee. Paint is, oh. paint is wisp of cinnamon? Question mark? Lots of, like, seven question marks. But then, <laughs> like, makes his way surely, downstairs in his PJs. Surely that's wrong, right? No? Okay. Maybe I should Google. As he makes his way downstairs, he will notice that that faintest wisp of cinnamon is already in the air, along with the smell of coffee. Ah. <laughs> and there's also the smell of something else, some breakfast. Looks like uh, Miguel has been making porridge. Uh, oh no. Yeah, it's over. Uh, he uh, opens the door. <laughs> and there's indeed Miguel. Slaving over a, um, over a pot of uh, oatmeal. Father David is suddenly overly aware of the fact that he is still in his pajamas. One article of clothing being that of a faded vegetal shirt. And the other being pajama pants with sleepy sheepies on them. <laughs> That's a very romantic get up, really. Mm -hmm. yeah. Miguel turns. Ooh. Miguel looks over and looks over his shoulder. He hears the door open, and as he hears the little tell a telltale owl noise of Father David, he smiles. <laughs> Buenos dias, muchacha latas. <laughs> I am gonna start at the gate, but try and roll some Spanish. Spanish. Yeah. Watch. Bing, bing, bong. Bang, bong. <laughs> I fail. Damn. He gets very flustered, and uh, part of it just doesn't really come out. Meanwhile, Miguel smiles at him. He says, Buenos dias, Padre. He walks over to him and just uh, just pushes a mug of coffee into his hand. <coughs> and gives him uh, and gives him an, an almost fatherly pat on the shoulder before going back to the oatmeal. <laughs> it's the quietest little Gracias, uh, Miguel. Ah, there, Padre. Ay. Ahora, venga. Hey. Hmm? Ahora, venga, he says, pointing at the, uh, and gesturing for the table. Father David gets the, uh, gets the impression that he is telling him to sit down. And enjoy the coffee, possibly. Why? Well, I wrote. <laughs> I uh, accidentally fell asleep on the couch last night. I was going to get uh, Mr. Shafter his coffee. Have you any I Do you, do you have any foggiest idea of wisp cinnamon? Miguel suddenly gets a very, very tired expression as he looks at Father David and just nods. Would you like me to take that to him? He smiles, but uh, shakes his head and rattles something off in Spanish. I want to try again for a Spanish check. I want to know. I want to know what. I want to know. Come on, you, you, have, you have one more skill point in it. There you <gasps> go. Do <Damn> it. <laughs> you fucking understand it. You understand the broad strokes of it. Of it. He is talking about how Mr. Shafter prefers his coffee, and apparently he likes it with his breakfast as opposed to apart from his breakfast. Oh, I see. Oh well. 
should should I let him know that he'll have his he'll get his coffee down here then? Oh, he would expect that. Miguel says something dismissive in Spanish again. Papa David gets the uh, the sensation of you could if you want to, but he's probably going to come down here anyway. That's the least I could. Oh, that's the least I could do, literally. I won't do anything oh. else. <laughs> well, I'm gonna say this is about when Raymond comes downstairs. Yes, Raymond uh, finished his morning yoga routine, switched into his um, morning getup. You know, a nice little, like, I don't know, <laughs> breakfast jacket. <laughs> I don't know what to say. It is not. Fuck it. He has a breakfast jacket on. It is. It, it is for you. <laughs> this is an outfit for every goddamn opportunity. <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. Morning, I all. Just... Oh. Morning, Mister Sapp. Oh, you got my coffee. Wonderful. Thank you very much, Father. Miguel. Oh. Before. Uh, Raymond can grab Father David's coffee and Miguel just walks over and almost doesn't look at Raymond, he just pushes the right cup into his hands. Raymond will just go <laughs> along with it. Surely Miguel knew his best. Mm -hmm. Sorry. He mumbles, Buenos dias, Mr. Shepherd. Gracias. Ben will take a a snitzer of his coffee and just like ah, perfect amount of cinnamon. No better way to start the day. And he will sit down and just nurture his coffee. Yeah, and it's about there. now that Jonah stumbles in half asleep. Just the right time as Miguel. I smell it. coffee. <laughs> as Miguel sees you walk in, he gives you a small, kind of pitying smile and hands you a nice steaming mug of coffee. It smells like it's got some, from, uh, some kind of syrup in it. It is fucking divine. And he also gestures for you to sit down as he places a bowl of oatmeal, nice and hot, in front of Father David. A plate of toast, also nice and hot, in front of uh, Raymond. And... Fifteen... Uh, eggs in yeah. front of Jonah. Absolutely fucking lutely. Fifteen fucking eggs in front of Jonah. Yeah. Fifteen tamales, two <laughs> eggs, I, and a hash brown. Wait, yes. wait, wait. How were the eggs cooked? Oh, the eggs are fucking... They are perfectly cooked. You've never seen more perfect eggs than that. Are they still... Is, is the yellow still I mean, are liquid? they like... I mean, oh, are they like sunny side up, scrambled, or what? They are sunny, sunny side up, and you could swear they are fried in bacon fat. Because there's also bacon there. Uh, Jonah will mumble thank you as he eats. Father oh, David and Miguel are your dads now. Yep. <laughs> oh yeah. Raymond just Raymond looks in slight disbelief at the amount of eggs. Uh, oh. And Jonah's gonna eat all of them. Oh yeah. Just as Miguel, uh, the spatulas, uh, another perfect egg, uh, on top of um. A blank piece of Raymond's toast. Effectively giving him a coffee share. Oh. Of course, you're still young. You can survive one or two heart attacks easily. Um, <laughs> <laughs> when will oh, finish his coffee? Oh, uh, yeah, I'll be... I'm not ever... I'm never gonna get a heart attack. I'll be fine. I'll live forever. I'll live yeah, forever. Exactly. As my grandmother would say, you're a right twig of a lad. 
you can withstand a couple more eggs. A couple more eggs. A couple more <laughs> eggs. As my, as my grandmother would say, I have eaten 20 eggs a day since I was 17. I have nothing. Do you smell toast? <laughs> <laughs> Well, Raymond will just eat his breakfast in a normal way that hopefully won't, like, kill him immediately. There's <laughs> no way 15x is healthy in any way, shape, or form. He's skinny. He's too skinny. I know. Yeah, Listen. yeah, you're right. 15's a weird number for eggs. You're not, you're not, you're not, 20. You're not Gaston. 20. <laughs> no. Uh, yeah, I am. You can't eat three dozen eggs. No. I'm not eating three dozen eggs. I'm eating fifteen. Also, is that a challenge? No. <laughs> okay, you shouldn't. Hot eat boy three Luke dozen eggs. Fit in two hot boiled <laughs> eggs. <laughs> see how well, hey, see how many I can fit in my mouth. <laughs> 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 no, Raymond is just bewildered at his choice of breakfast. He also he's also very concerned about the porridge thing. Oh, did everyone sleep? Just oatmeal. Just oatmeal. I really don't like porridge. <laughs> it makes me puke. It's and awful. that's why Raymond is getting toast instead of porridge. Oh yeah, I do. Oh, oh just thinking of porridge. Mm, no. Oh. Oh. oh my god. Father David puts his hand behind his neck and he like rolls his head back and you just hear like this <laughs> <laughs> It's like somebody it's like Stepping on like a like a dry noodle, the dry last... pack of noodles with their heel. I'd say the last time I heard that noise was in a screening of a Jason Bourne movie. <laughs> yep, Miguel audibly and visibly cringes as he sees that and turns to Father David. I had to make it possible. But Miguel, Miguel, could you be so kind and give Father David one of your patented neck massages? Oh, no, 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 hesitate. He just oh. gives a worried look and nods. He walks behind Father David and fucking three touches later, Father David is butter. His neck has never felt better and Miguel is still cold. Oh, I, I said it. Father David, at our, <laughs> Father David, at our age, we really shouldn't be sleeping on couches anymore. Well, it's... The wee lass wanted a story, and I wasn't finished yet. Well, of course, but normally it's the child who felt who, who falls asleep reading a bedtime story and not the adult, isn't it? Esther doesn't sleep anymore. Granted that <laughs> Miguel's eyebrows slowly raising. <laughs> Granted, oh, that yeah. would complicate things, but... Oh... Thank you so much, Miguel. You really don't have to do this. Don't... Yes, uh, Father David, don't, uh, if your neck is bothering you, don't hesitate to call Miguel to touch you. He will do so. <laughs> he chokes on his fucking cup. <laughs> Miguel <clears throat> pats him in the back. Uh, how do? You, how is it to say uh, thank you? Pinch ass, puta. No. No. <laughs> 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 No, like... he wouldn't. <laughs> Fucking horse. <laughs> oh my god. No. <laughs> no. no. He's just got like his, his face in his hands because he's trying to at least somewhat scrape up like what remains of the I'm not gay thing he's got going on. What is... <laughs> His cheeks are goddamn glowing, though. Mm. You can you can actually see it on the tips of his ears. What is, let's see. What is thank you for touching me there? Uh, the, <laughs> gracias por tocarme, Ali. <laughs> thank you for using your fingers on me in this way. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna kill him. It's not even gonna be the ghosts that kill him. <laughs> it's gonna be you monsters. <laughs> yep. Choked on porridge while getting a massage from Miguel. What a way to go. <laughs> what a way to go. 
<laughs> Father died the way he lived. Being gay, or being in denial about his gayness. Oh yeah. Not being Father gay died the at way all. he lived. Deep in the closet, choking on it. Listen, man. You live your entire life, and your grandma's like, you like girls? Only because you're a boy, and you decide, you know what? I guess I'm just gonna go to the priesthood because I don't like girls. I mean, yeah, but at the same time, you might as well be celibate and have that excuse. Yeah. Poor, yeah. poor Father David is so deep in the closet; he's finding talking lions. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. the the lion, the witch, and the wardrobe. I think. Ooh, that's a good one. I read it when I was 19. I wasn't allowed to read it when I was a young'un. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Too much witch, uh, witchcraft in it. Oh, yeah. Not enough Grand Jesus Mom in the didn't. Jesus metaphor. Yeah, do you, you'd think Grand Christians Mom was would not love... a fan. You, you think Christians <laughs> would love that book, right? <laughs> it's literally about Jesus conquering old magic. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah, you'd think. Maybe they're just uh, maybe they're just too anti furries. Who knows? Uh, yeah, that's probably it. Father David's gonna put a hand back on uh, on Miguel's and on the hand, and then he's gonna take Miguel's hand, and he's just gonna lead him over to the chair that's right beside him, so he can sit down and enjoy some coffee and breakfast too. <laughs> Miguel will stubbornly stay for a moment. And give Father David a little bit of a look. And then do something with his hands on Father David's neck. And he just he feels some kind of crack back there. And everything's just loose. Loose and soft and warm and good and no pain. When did he learn to His run? head almost falls into his oatmeal. <laughs> <laughs> when when like, did Miguel... Oh. Wait, when did Miguel learn the Vulcan nerve pinch exactly? When he did watches that a lot out? of television. <laughs> and he watches plenty of television. I guess so. Yeah. Pats, and he passed Father David twice on the shoulder and sits down. Uh, anybody want to roll for um, the listening check on Father David? Yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah. Go right ahead. Heart just beating <laughs> like a two-stroke engine. <laughs> I did it. Yeah. Yeah. I did not. <laughs> uh, deaf. I wrote a ninety-four. I'm I'm fucking deaf. Jeez. Maybe I'm making that roll. You probably just you probably just have news pulled up on your phone or something. Well, yeah. I mean, I have to look up my stocks, see how rich I am now. Stocks, obviously. <laughs> Uh, Jonah, Jonah hears the distinct sounds of Latin. <laughs> oh no, Father David has spent too much time with the ghosts. He started speaking in tongues. Oh no, speak in Latin. The problem starts when you when you uh, think in tongues, not speak in them. Oh yeah. No 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 no. Forgive me. He's not speaking Latin. <clears throat> He's speaking Gaelic. Oh, oh yes. no! Perfect. You hear, you Ooh. hear Gaelic. <laughs> it's that good. He's that good. It's just, is he just, just like very quietly mumbling to himself? <laughs> he is very quietly mumbling Gaelic to himself. I'm gonna say Miguel is close enough that he hears it. Well, you know, he I can't understand it, but he hears it. I wouldn't. He has no <laughs> idea what Father David is saying. I wouldn't put it it's past awesome. Miguel to know Gaelic. <clears throat> Uh, oh, I like Gaelic. Yeah, oh, no. it's like some itch. <laughs> it's that, that weird. I'm sorry, I am 12 years old. It's that weird magic <laughs> language the Irish don't speak. Yeah. At least I wasn't going that far with it. Yeah, that's better. Anyway, yeah. Father David's latent homosexual urges aside, <laughs> for now. Uh, Raven will look up from his phone and his, as usual, rising stock options. Um, but Father David, what happened to the, uh, 
the your supposed uh, ghost child. What did he say? What happened to your supposed ghost child? <coughs> oh, Esther? Esther, I assume he yeah, drifted off somewhere. I... I did see the faintest outline of her. Using these, and he takes the uh, he takes the green lenses out of his little pocket. He wasn't as vivid as the, the marks, the handprints left behind. Well, I was wondering. But that's all right. I was wondering. Uh, assuming you can now communicate with her, and she considers you a friend, could we bring her into the basement to? Uh... Meet your friend? Oh, I am hesitating quite a bit about that. Why? They seem Something's to be on... just... Well, they seem to be on a good rapport. She said that he gave her odd dreams. But she also said she doesn't dream anymore. She doesn't dream anymore because she's dead. Well, <laughs> Miguel okay. just sitting at the table looking back and forth like... <laughs> Slowly <laughs> looking the, over at Father David. The hell did I miss? Uh, yep. <laughs> well, he, uh, Father, Father David looks well, back at Miguel. Well, Father David, not to put too fine a point on it, but if that child is indeed deceased, then no harm could come to her. I doubt that. Something's a miss. Yeah, there's definitely something wrong. I mean, and we can try uh, to see what it is, but I'm kind of scared. It's all right, Jorima. I mean, that basement's um, already creepy enough. Oh yes, and the owners don't even know the half of it. It makes me wonder what's really going on here. I'm still not sure that the owners don't know. Seems more like deliberate sabotage on their part. Why would they lie? <clears throat> Let there be no benefit to lying, and and I I know what's going on, and I'm pretty sure you know what's going on. You you're still in a little bit of denial, Mister Crafter, but that's all right. Well, fair is fair, Father David. I remember, there's an old Latin saying that fits almost everywhere and any time. Cui bono? Who benefits? I'm sure the owners of this mansion have something to gain from us living here, discovering the basement, so to speak. Brother David takes a sip of his coffee. They get money from us staying here. Maybe they, it's, it's possible they don't really care about much else. Ah, but if they, they're just happy for somebody to stay in this place, despite the rumors about it. Ah, but if that were true, why hinder us from dispelling said rumors by doing a more uh, thorough investigation of the basement? Who knows? Maybe they're a little bit aware of what's going on as well. Remember, I... I all but offered them a free reno renovation of the entire basement facility. And they threatened to sue me. That's not normal behavior. Yeah, there's that... Uh, we really should look into the owners a little bit more. It would be advisable. Yes, we should. I think a trip to the local library might be in order. It might. Oh. oh. Anything you do, uh, anything you do go to the local library, Doctor Celeste Lebon can get her slurred on with the uh, with the clerk as well uh, again. 
Sorry, with her feminine wiles. This again. Yeah. Feminine wiles. We're yeah. not, look, we're not here to have people couple with each other. We're here to have thought a day with McDougal, get a hook on with Miguel, and that's it. Obviously. That's what these, this Bubba entire David game Bully. is about. <laughs> Bully come to terms to his feelings about the uh, same yeah. sex. Yes. As well as this amazingly handsome, generous, and kind fellow who goes by Miguel. Because just homosexuality all along. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. I think it would be a good idea to enact this uh, this plan of going to the library once everybody is gathered here again. Yeah, probably yeah we idea. probably do want, we should probably have at least Mara. Yeah. Exactly, Mara would mm -hmm. like to be here for that. Yeah. And also, I got up way too early so that so I am quite tired. So today is just going to be this. It's fair. Very short, <laughs> short and sweet, little sister. It was one hour forty yeah. minutes. That's fine. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So that's about it. Say bye. Mm -hmm. Bye, everybody. Bye. Yeah.